Okay, we are continuing with assignment two. We have our sketch. I've collected some reference, not for everything, but at least for the head, a little bit for the torso. It's good to, to view these icons pretty big, so you know they're there. I haven't f found anything for the tail yet or for the legs. The horned back I kind of have covered with the torso, but I was thinking maybe a pine cone. So I have my sketch here. How do we get started on this project? Just like we did with the landscape project, I'm going to open my sketch in Photoshop. And what you can do is use Command Shift 4 using the FaceTime camera. And once you have a sketch that you're excited about, you can capture it that way. And then we have to resize it. We have to kind of crop to the sketch and resize it so that it's print quality. And we want around 9 by 12 inches, 11 by 14 inches, something like that, bigger than 8 by 10, by 350 pixels per inch. So that if it really turns out well, this can be a really high quality print. And that's why we're only looking for, for references that are 8 megapixels or bigger, so that they're high quality and resolution as well. All right, so here's my sketch. I have all these notes off to the side here in preview. So for my actual project, I'm going to crop it just to around the image of the creature itself. And remember, we want to do the creature with white space all the way around it. So we're showing the creature head to tail. Everything's in there. Nothing's cropped off. Okay, now I go to image size and I'm going to make it, I'm going to resample it and make it uh, 9 inches. And this is close to 9 by 12, so that's perfect, by 350 pixels per inch. And it's going to soften it a little bit, even though this is a digital drawing I did. That's fine. So now this is print resolution for 9 by 12. Why do I do 9 by 12? Well, if I don't resample and I make that 11, you'll notice that that's around 11 by 14 by 280. And anything above 240 is good enough to print without being able to recognize any problems. All right, so this gives me a very flexible type, um, size to use without having to get reference that's just way too big. Okay, now just like we do with the landscape, I want to grow some space around my image. So I'm going to right from the background layer, go to image canvas size, and grow my width to be 30 inches, my height to be 40 inches, and the canvas extension color to be gray. Then command zero, keep it all on the screen. So this is the assembly line chassis. This is the structure that I'm going to <coughs> bolt everything to, weld everything to. But the different component parts I'll build outside of the line before I bring them on. So let's bring on the parts for the head. And I can just drag and drop, right? They'll come in as smart objects. I'll place them. It will show me how large they are. I use the move tool. I think the ones, I really like the color of this one. Yeah, these are nice and big. In fact, these might be big enough. I, I might resample everything a little bit larger, maybe to a 11 by 14. Because cameras are getting better and better, so the resolution is getting better and better. And this is the one I think I was most excited about. And I can go ahead and flip that horizontal, and that really kind of fits especially if I rotate it, the spine I was thinking of for my creature. Not that I'm going to use this, but I want a connection of the head with the spine in a way that's believable. And that's about the right size, so, so I'm at a good resolution. All right, one, two, three, four. Then I got some lower jaw stuff here. I like this one. Flip that. 
hold down shift and option, shrink it. I can start making these about the right size, maybe a little bit larger than I need them. And now we're improvising. Just like our landscape, we get to use different components from different things. I like those teeth too though, so we shall see. Okay, so now it's like building the engine. The head is always kind of what you start with because that's the focal point of any character or creature design. So I need to know the angle of the head, and this is honestly the best angle. You see how we're looking at the top of the head? And so I'm going to cut that out first. So I'll use my move tool, make sure I have that layer selected. And just like we did with the landscape, I'm going to do a rough cut around it. He's got these crazy teeth which I definitely want to keep. But I can manipulate them and work with them any way I want. And you want as much overlap as possible. So I can take all of that and then duplicate it. Command J and turn off the smart layer underneath. Okay, now this is too big. So I'm going to shrink it to just a little bit larger than I need for my creature. All right. Next, this head is a pretty good angle. I'm going to cut it out. Duplicate. I want to make sure I'm on the right layer, though. Duplicate that head, turn off the smart layer behind, but maybe mark this because I'm going to use this later for the spine. Now, this head is a little bit smaller than I need, and it's actually not quite the right angle, but let me show you how this works because I get to improvise right now. This is why I love organic creatures so much more than mechanical structures. I can move this over the top, I can take its opacity down, and I can line up what's the focal point of the head. What do you say? It's usually the eyeball, right? So I'm going to line up the eyeballs, and then I'm going to play with warping, and I can kind of change the angle of this creature make that eye a little bit more interesting, make the coloring a little bit more interesting. Then I go back to 100% opacity, and now we're going to immediately go to our tricks for compositing. Tricks like image adjustments, first levels, I want to deepen the midtones, right? I want to brighten the highlights, be a little bit more like this reference. The shadows I think are good, but the color I definitely want to change that color balance to being a lot more blue, a lot more cyan. Right. Maybe a little bit of yellow in the highlights, and a little bit more cyan. Uh, no, maybe a. There we go. In the midtones. Okay, now I can use a soft eraser but maybe not as soft as I used for the uh, for the landscape. And I'm going to get rid of these hard edges. And now I'm starting to kind of blend. Remember these are fantasy creatures. This is 100% <coughs> opacity because i got to get rid of that, that hard edge, that seam. But then I can start blending these colors and these textures together just with lower opacity brushes. 
So I'm basically putting a mask on my alligator head and giving him some spikes on the horned lizard. Okay, once I get to the outside of the face, like here, I'm not going to worry about it too much because eventually I'll cut that all out, right? But what I might do is take a lower opacity eraser now and blend this in a little bit. And then I might work backwards and work on the levels of the crocodile head underneath. I don't know if it's a crocodile or an alligator. I guess it's an alligator. It's more point. I don't know. I've always been confused. And I can play with the lighting a little bit. Take the highlights down a tiny bit, deepen the midtones. And then maybe burn this stripe coming from his nose. See, so that flows in a little bit more naturally. Makes it look more like local color now. And then I can burn this shadow as well on the horned lizard, kind of match the lighting. Because your lighting is not going to match on these different creature references. You have to make it match. Okay. So, I'll, I'll save it in a second. So that's how we start with kind of the assembly line. Start with the head once you have an idea of the angle of the head from your sketch. And I can help you with your sketch, help you know what's going to be the best silhouette for your creature. Okay, so now... Um, I think I want the eye to be a little different than that tiny eye, though I like the angle of it. And I could blend the eyes together. But maybe I bring in this head now. So I want some of this color. So I'm going to cut that out, even though it's a slightly wrong angle. Right? I already have a good, good angle worked out. And I want a lot of that color that's in focus. Duplicate it, turn off the smart layer behind, and then once we get all these layers together, I'm going to organize them into what's called a layer group for the head. Use command right bracket to move that layer up above everything. I'm using command plus to zoom in, command minus to zoom out, holding down spacebar to move things around using the move tool. And again, I will take the opacity down. I will line up the eye. And I will transform. I will rotate. I will stretch. Using warp, try to get a little bit more of the top of the head in there. So that eye really kind of turns around. I might even selectively move certain parts, like all of this. The tip of the mouth and all that color. Within the same layer, I can select it and I can move it and line up those nostrils. Okay, then if I take the opacity,